There's no doubt, today more than ever, we all need a little uplifting. Times are scary, and the world can seem lonely and frightening, but God is always present. God loves us and wants us to know He is here and always there when we need Him. The Warriors for Christ podcast seeks to uplift, edify, and encourage you to be the light and salt in a dark and tasteless world. They have new episodes weekly. Be sure to subscribe and share the Warriors for Christ podcast with your friends and family. Find the Warriors for Christ podcast podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Player FM, Stitcher, Deezer, Amazon Podcast, and on their website, warriorsforchrist.podomatic.net. That's the number four, warriorsforchrist.podomatic.net. Warriors for Christ, letting the Bible speak and teach for itself. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida, Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome to the program, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And make sure that you follow and subscribe on whatever platform you are listening to us on. If you're on YouTube... Make sure you like the video. Give it a thumbs up. That would be greatly appreciated if you're watching or listening, I should say, on YouTube. All right. So I just saw just a few minutes ago some of the best news I've heard in a long, long time. And it's in the title of the show, of course, and it's in the thumbnail on YouTube. But this is really good news. Now, we had this historic rally of President Trump's in Arizona with Kerry Lake, who's running for governor out there Saturday night. And that was historic because of a number of reasons. One, it was President Trump's first Save America rally for the midterm election season. And he had over 50,000 people there. They Mm -hmm. turned away thousands and thousands of people, and still they had over 50,000 in attendance. I think he needs to um, have bigger venues because they seem to have thousands of people that can never get in or people they turn away. He needs to play in different, that's, like a larger area. That's, that's No, no, no. That's, that's part of marketing. You want oh. to have, you know, 50,000 spots is a lot. But, you, you know, you want, you want to have overflow that can't make it in. That's part of the PR of everything. But 50,000 inside, thousands turned away. That, I mean, that's amazing. It is. No president could get crowds like that time and time again. Certainly yeah. not a former president. He all but announced he's running for re-election in 2024. In fact, I think if you had every president that was alive today that was going to do an appearance, I don't think they could get 5,000 between the four or five of them maybe, that are alive. Maybe if, if Lincoln and Washington rose from the dead Possibly. and showed up. And, you know, today is Martin Luther King Day. And I, I'm not going to disrespect Martin Luther King at all because I have great respect for Martin Luther King. And I want to talk about Martin Luther King later in the show. But he had his big I Have a Dream speech. And when you see any story about Martin Luther King today, it probably has a picture of that. And that was the speech that Martin Luther King gave on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial at the Washington Mall. And a lot of people showed up. Thousands of people showed up. I don't know how many, but that was that was a lot. I don't even think Martin Luther King could get as many people as President Trump does on an average Saturday night for seven years now because this started back in 2015. And anytime he has a rally, thousands and thousands show up, even during the pandemic when Mm -hmm. he did that one rally. I don't even think Martin Luther King, at the height of his activism, could have done that on a regular basis, okay? And it's it's historic, and, and they hate him for it, but we love him. So I just saw that's not the that's good news, but this is even better news. And this this is I saw this story just before showtime. And I'm like this is amazing. Majority of Americans now identify. See, this is a good thing. Now, you know, liberals are all into what people identify as. Majority of Americans now identify as Republican after massive 14% swing in one year, wow. and that would be the year of Biden. Incredible. This is a Gallup survey, and let me read through this. I pull, I don't usually read through these things, but this is such important news. I feel I must. So I'm going to read to you actually from Gallup. This is the actual Gallup survey 
And if you go online to news.gallup.com, news.gallup.com, you can find this. Let me say real quick. And my dad talked to me about this. He said, that's the good thing that happens. You know, there, there's always a reaction in politics to one person. And he said the good thing and when, when a year ago, he said the good thing about Biden being in is he will be so awful like Carter that it will help the Republican Party. Everything, people will just be so disappointed and so upset with him and his policies that it's going to help us in the long run. And oh, I yeah. agree. And I think the key to that is getting rid of a lot of these rhinos because they really stand in the way of America really being amazing because they're they're there, like uh, Carrie Lake says, the uniparty. Mm-hmm. And that's true. There's one party in Washington, and and they don't have your interests at heart. They have their own interests at heart. No, not at all. Now, let me read through this. Now, then, this is the official Gallup survey I'm reading from. So this is scientific so far as surveys and polls go. Mm-hmm. On average, Americans' political party preferences in 2021 look similar to prior years, with slightly more U.S. adults identifying as Democrats or leading Democratic. Okay, 46 percent identified um, as Republican or lean Republican. Right. However, the general stability for the full year average obscures a dramatic shift over the course of 2021 from a nine percentage point Democratic advantage Mm. to a five point Republican edge. So. They were uh, the Democrats were ahead by nine points now, which is still shocking. Yeah, there, there were yeah nine percent. <laughs> there were nine percent more people who sa- said they were Democrats. Incredible. Now Republicans have a five point lead. That means Republicans have gained fourteen points. Incredible. Because you got to add both of them right. together to get that. These results are based on data from all U.S. Gallup surveys in 2021 which included interviews with more than 12,000. Mm. Gallup asks all Americans in interviews whether they identify politically as a Republican, a Democrat, or an independent. Independents are then asked whether they lean more Republican or Democrat. The combined percentage of party identifiers and leaners gives a measure of the relative strength of the two parties politically. Both the nine-point Democrat advantage and the five-point Republican edge are among the largest Gallup has measured for each party since it began measuring this in 1991. So this this is amazing. It this is. Me, this is the year of Biden. So that yeah. You so know how like in China they have the year of the rat or the year of the pig or the year of the dog. Yeah. This is the year of the Biden. That's right and it, and it's a good year for Trump and Republicans That's because for sure. For republic for Republicans to gain fourteen percentage points of Americans, and I want to tell you this, okay? Oh, yeah. Because I know I know a lot about polling. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of it too much and talk about math, but I do know I, I'm not very good at math. But I was very good when I took statistics in college. Uh, the statistics I thought was cool, so I I do know and understand a lot about statistics and polling. You did do good in class, I remember. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And um. When when you're talking about this survey, it's Americans, right? Not registered voters or likely voters. So right. when you're doing a poll on politics, there's three levels of polling for scientific accuracy. The most accurate are likely voters. Likely voters are identified as people who have voted in the past two elections, are registered to vote, and say they are going to vote in the next election. Registered voters are just people that are registered. They may never vote. The least scientifically accurate for Republicans are of Americans because Americans, mm-hmm. when they're just sampling Americans, that leans liberal, 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 liberal. And this poll is among the liberal leaning sample of Americans and Republicans had a 14 point gain. That is amazing. And believe me, the Democrats, amazing. they've known this for a while. Oh, that, I because, don't know about this well, one. Why do you think they're pushing all this voter stuff And they're now? all retiring. They're, yeah, they're all running. retiring and they're pushing all this in these new voter laws and they're pushing this narrative that black people for some reason can't get their vote out, which is ridiculous. They've known about this. They, they've known that, th- that this is the way America is swinging now. And why do you think they're allowing in all these illegals and now allow, trying to allow them to vote? Yeah. And all this stuff, because that's the only way they're going to win. They don't win on their policies. OK, they win on division. They win on fear tactics. 
and they win on th- these mm-hmm. BS laws that they try to pass where you have 60 days to vote, Yeah, and which is ridiculous. I remember when I was a kid, uh, you know, back in the old days, my parents would vote. I would go with them. I went with my mom all the time, and it was one day, one day only, and it was a paper ballot. You went and you punched it. And that was it. And now they give you, what, 30 days, Some 45 more. days? Some more. It's ridiculous. They want to have 365 days a year. I guess so. They want to do. You start in January. Now, now today's Martin Luther King Day, and uh, Biden gave some speech on Martin Luther King, and, and he left out a couple of things. Oh. When he was talking about Martin Luther King today, Joe Biden left out that he was close friends with Robert Byrd, who was a grand Klegel of the Ku Klux Klan, the KKK. Hillary was friends with him, too. And that he, yeah, and that he was friends with racist George Wallace, who he was not only friends with, George Wallace endorsed him, okay, mm-hmm. in a Senate right. race. He left that out. But I you know, wanted to say a couple things, though, about Martin Luther King, because these, these, these snakes on the left, when the Martin Luther King holiday— was being debated in the early 80s. Ronald Reagan was president, and it was a very controversial thing. I remember that. It was controversial, and it was not controversial for the reasons that you are hearing about today. Some Republicans, not all, but some Republicans opposed making the Martin Luther King Day a holiday. And there's a clip of Sam Donaldson in a press conference at the White House questioning Ronald Reagan about it. And Ronald Reagan didn't really give a clear answer either way. He was kind of letting things play out. And they're, they're, they're circulating this around to make it sound as if Ronald Reagan was a racist, Republicans right. were racist, and they opposed the Martin Luther King holiday. I don't think people realize this. When it comes to holidays, how many holidays do we have in America that are for individuals? Uh, and I'm not including Christmas for Jesus, right? You, you, you we, we don't well, even. Jesus has two. He has Easter and Christmas. Yeah, but the liberals don't recognize that. Right. But, but um, we don't have really any. We used to have. No, one. you don't. You have. I think the closest would be President's well, Day, but pr- they used to have it. They'd have George Washington's birthday. Washington's birthday and Lincoln's birthday were holidays, and they were close together, a couple weeks apart, and they combined it into President's Day. He's the only one that has his own, except for maybe Columbus. And the controversy around the Martin Luther King holiday was not about anything you're hearing about. And this is what it was about. And Ronald Reagan talked about this at the time. You got to understand, Martin Luther King was not dead very long in the early 80s. He died in 1968. So, and um, we yeah, had only been like 15 years. We, we still had Washington and Lincoln's birthdays. It had not been combined to President's Day yet. But off the top of my head, I cannot think of another federal holiday that is for a, an individual man, a is citizen. Is Columbus Day? Um, um, okay, uh, we'll give you Columbus Day. Okay. Yeah. But I'm but in modern But that's like times, 500 years right, ago. In modern Mar- times. Martin Luther King had died. Yeah, he's the only one. Martin Luther King had been dead for about 15 years or so when he's this He's the was, only one where the banks actually closed. Yeah. Martin Luther King had been dead only about 15 years or so when they were making this a holiday. Columbus is 500 years. And so that the controversy was there was a concern about um having a holiday for a for an individual person. Okay, which I think is a legitimate gripe to have and a question to have. I'm not opposed to the Martin Luther King holiday, but don't believe this garbage that's circulating around today that Ronald Reagan and these Republicans were racist. We have Columbus Day, and that's is that it now, Kathy? Yeah, and you know, you don't ever see Republicans playing these race baiting tactics. Yeah. Do you ever see Republicans do that? But the liberals, that's all they'd have is 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 pointing fingers and calling everybody bigots. Mm -hmm. Don't you understand if you're a minority here that they are using you? They've always used you. They were using you back in the 16, 1700s and they're using you to this day. And what they do is they tap into fear. They tap into the, they lay these little seeds of paranoia and fear and division. And this is all they have to, you know, I love how then they all say they're going to unite people. Give me a break. Um, they just can, I never see Republicans really using these kind of tactics to stay in power. No, and but this is what the Democrats always do. And, and another thing they're floating around, okay, today on Martin Luther King Day, and it all involves Ronald Reagan because he was president when this mm-hmm. holiday came to be. Um, 
that uh, they're saying that Republicans believed that Martin Luther King should not get a holiday because he was a communist and he had a mistress in every city, right? And he was in league with communists. None of this is true. Uh, those rumors about Martin Luther King came from the Democrats. Jagger Hoover's FBI, and at, during the time of Martin Luther King's big time celebrity, who was president, right? Kennedy? You know, Eisenhower at the very beginning, but it was Kennedy and Lyndon Johnson and the Democrats, Lyndon Johnson in particular, Lyndon Johnson and J. Edgar Hoover were spying on Martin Luther King and spreading lies and rumors that he – and if you remember those stories, it wasn't just – he was in league with communists mm-hmm. and, and uh, not only did he have a mistress in every city, but they were always white women. Okay, now here's the thing about that. And this shows you how fake it is. This was all Johnson, all J. Edgar Hoover. They were doing to Martin Luther King what they tried to do to President Trump, Mm -hmm. right, with that dossier, FBI, and all that stuff. They were trying to get rid of Martin Luther King, okay? They were trying to get rid of Martin Luther King. And the Democrats in the South is where all – Martin Luther King was fighting Democrats, not Republicans. Republicans were on Martin Luther King's side. It was Democrats – who were opposing Martin Luther King at every turn. And Lyndon Johnson, being from Texas, and J. Edgar Hoover, being who he was, they knew the way to try to turn people away from Martin Luther King in the mid-1960s was that he was having sex with white women, which was illegal in parts of the country at the time. This was, And they're floating this around today. I watched this press conference with that jerk Sam Donaldson. Is he still alive, Sam Donaldson? With Ronald Reagan acting as if Ronald Reagan was spreading all these rumors about uh, Martin Luther King. This was Lyndon Johnson, Mm -hmm. your big Democrat, who who also killed all our boys in Vietnam, and that creep uh, J. Edgar Comey, I mean uh, Hoover, okay? Well, and it's kind of funny or ironic because these people in the media that are trying to make it look like Reagan was against Martin Luther King and all this stuff, they're the ones who are destroying his legacy, Yeah, these modern liberals. They're bringing segregation back. He was totally against that. Martin Luther King fought and died. So he said it. He wants his children to be in a world where they're judged by the content of their character. That's not the world we live in anymore. People get into college based on race. Mm. People get medication based on race. Now, people get jobs based on race. That is not what he wanted. He wanted to walk in a room and have people look at him for who he is, not for what he looks like. And that's the way it should be. But now we live in a society, thanks to the Democrats, where you're instantly judged by the way, like you're a white male. So according to today's Democrats, you're an instant threat. You're a bigot. You're, you're violent. The male, tox, male uh, toxicity, because you're a guy and you're a white guy. So you're a danger. All white women are Karens. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, they're the ones dividing, segregating everybody by color and by race. That is the opposite of what he fought and died for. So they're the ones that are destroying his legacy. And they know this, but instead they got to focus on something that happened 40 freaking years ago. And they have to twist the truth about what it was and paint a, a president who's been long dead as a racist, this is what they do. They don't look at their own, you know, it's a lot. It's pretty funny. They're sitting there calling Reagan, trying to allude that he's a racist or saying it when they're the racists, they're the bigots. Look what they're doing to people today. Mm -hmm. It's insane. That's right. Now, listen, I want to take a moment to thank our Patreon supporters for their support of the program. Thank you so much. And if you would like to support this program, a great way to do that is to become a Patreon supporter. There is a link in the description of this and every episode as well as a direct link on my website, briancraigshow.com. There are perks to becoming a Patreon supporter, including commercial-free editions of each and every podcast episode. And our top Patreon supporters get a live on-air thank you on each and every episode. So the names you are about to hear are our top Patreon supporters, and your name can be added to that list if you become a top Patreon supporter. I want to thank Andrew and Connie for their support. Christine, Gary. E-T-W, Chuck, D, Pamela, Jacqueline, Rick, Rich, and Nick. These are our top Patreon supporters. Thank you so much, everyone, for your support. We're going to take a quick break, all right? I'm Brian. 
Always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. Don't go anywhere. After this break, we've got a lot more to talk about. Stay tuned. Love can happen in many places, and author Misty Rosette knows all about that. The books in her Love and Travel series books are Love in Rio, Love in London, Love in the Caribbean, Love in Las Vegas, and Love in Venice. In this must-read series of books, you will find romance, surprises, excitement, and secrets. Author Misty Rosette is a hopeless romantic, and if you love romance novels, this is the perfect series for you. These are unique romance stories that you will love. They're delightful, fun, and will keep you wanting more. If you're looking for your happily ever after, you will find it in the Love and Travel series of books from author Misty Rosette. This series is great for book clubs too. Just search Misty Rosette on Amazon. Drop your NFT collection with zero coding skills. That's right. ZeroCodeNFT.com is a seamless solution to create a smart contract and facilitate the launch of your NFT collection while keeping the fees to a minimum. ZeroCodeNFT.com offers a wide range of features such as lazy minting. Your customers pay the fees. Batch minting. Airdrop. You can surprise people by sending them a free NFT. ZeroCodeNFT.com also offer custom white label solutions as well. Zero code nft.com a seamless solution to create a smart contract and facilitate the launch of your nft collection are you someone who likes France and all things French? Then there's a book from author David Newton Dunn that you will want to add to your must-read list. Secrets from a Stranger, available on Amazon. Secrets from a Stranger is a new French thriller. It's a real page-turner. A long-haired stranger asking too many questions shatters the lives of 30-year-old Camille and her famous mother who won a gold medal at the age of 17 in the 1936 Olympic Games. Mostly set in France in the 1960s, readers will also visit pre-war Berlin, Paris in the 1940s, and London before murders are unleashed and a desperate, pulse-racing manhunt ensues. Camille is disenchanted back in France after living in London and falls for the mysterious stranger who arrives in the village under suspicious circumstances. She stumbles over secrets and makes terrible decisions which endanger her life and her mother's. She never loses hope and tries untiringly to get her life together only for a trap to close around her and greed to lead to murder. Intermingled with echoes of the last World War, the French Resistance, and the Plight of the Jews. Secrets from a Stranger is deeply psychological and relentlessly suspenseful. It's full of twists and high emotions and will keep readers who like Europe and historical fiction on the edge of their seats. There are so many details that show the author's exceptional knowledge and love of France. Secrets from a Stranger is perfect for book clubs, those who have traveled to France, have a trip to France in their future, or have always dreamed of visiting France. Available in Kindle, paperback, and hard cover editions secrets from a stranger from author david newton dunn order your copy right now you are listening to the brian craig show podcast broadcasting from sunny south florida brian is joined by his wife and co-host kathy follow brian on social media at brian and now brian and kathy Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. Thanks for tuning in, and happy Monday to all of you. All right, let's get right back into it. Now, here's a story. It has not been totally fleshed out yet, and my initial reaction was a little di- to this story was a little different than how I'm looking at it now, but I have not rendered a permanent opinion on this. I need to get more information. But I want to talk about this. You may have seen the video. I saw this over the weekend because it is a local story here in Florida. In fact, it's here not too far from where we live in Sunrise, Florida, which is where I've been to a Trump rally before. I've been to a couple of Trump events there. In fact, Sunrise is where President Trump just had his recent event with Bill O'Reilly on their history tour. And this involves the police. Here's the headline. Florida cop grabs female officer by the throat. After she pulled him off a suspect and I saw a portion of the video and I thought this this cop is out of his mind. This sergeant, it was a lady cop. And then I saw the video in its entirety. And I want you guys to let us know in the comments what you think about this story. Let me read through this. This is in the New York Post. A veteran Florida police officer is under investigation after he was caught on video. This is all on body cam grabbing a female cop by the throat when she tried to pull him away from a handcuffed suspect. Sunrise Police Sergeant Christopher Poole-Ease, 21-year veteran, 
uh, is accused of attacking a 28-year-old female officer who has not been named outside a shop-and-save convenience store on November 19th. The ordeal unfolded when pulleys – this is the – he's a 46-year-old uh, police sergeant – and several other cops were arresting a man for aggravated battery after he had hit people outside the store. Body camera footage, which was only released last week, showed the sergeant walking up to the suspect as officers were struggling to get him into the police car. The sergeant, police, leaned into the car, pulled his pepper spray out, aimed it at the suspect as he spoke to him. Because he was threatening him to try to get him to calm down because he was resisting. The female cop suddenly ran over and tugged on Sergeant Pulley's belt from behind. That's nuts. In a bid to get him away from the suspect. This is all on body cam footage. Sergeant Pulley's whipped around, grabbed hold of the lady officer's neck, shoved her against another patrol car. This is all in the footage. The Sunrise Police Chief described the sergeant's behavior as disgusting. Of course. And uh, he's on administrative leave and all this stuff. Okay. Now, when I first saw, heard this and saw a clip of it, I thought, this guy, he looks like some roid monster who's out of control. And then I saw the whole video and saw that he was dealing with a guy who was resisting. She came, I mean, imagine, imagine you're in a heated thing with a violent guy. This guy was hitting people in front of the store, right? Aggravated assault. Someone comes up behind you. You don't know who they are. You're a cop. You, and, they, and she grabbed his gun belt. Well, he okay. I think his response was instinctive. I think I agree, but I think both of their reactions, both of their actions were bad. She should never have grabbed his belt. I don't know what the hell she was thinking. Um, to me, that's an aggressive, stupid move. And I, you know, but but a lot of cops these days are paranoid. This was a black suspect, and they're panicked. But the guy the didn't pull out a gun. White. The cop didn't pull out a gun. He pulled out his pepper spray. Yeah. So obviously, you know, he's using a different protocol or trying not to get jammed up like Kim Potter. But I don't understand. So I don't understand her thinking because he didn't have a gun on the guy. He just had pepper spray, which isn't going to kill you. And uh, he was using that to try to subdue him. Yeah. And that's what they want to do with these modern day to avoid people getting killed. So I don't know what her beef was. She was wrong. But I saw the video. He turned around and he saw her and then he grabbed her neck. He knew exactly who she was. He ha- he paused for about two seconds. He looked at her. He knew it was her. He didn't just turn around and instinctively grab, like not knowing who it was. He turned around and there was like a second or two of a pause and then he lunged. So he definitely was wrong on that. You know, you don't do that to a fellow cop, you know, but what she did was wrong too. I think they both did something wrong and I think they should both be reprimanded, not fired, but reprimanded. I mean- People make mistakes. Things get heated in the moment. You have to understand there's a lot of adrenaline. And this is the problem when, with male cops and female cops. Men have much more testosterone. They have different kinds of hormones. They have much more testosterone than a woman. They have much more. They might have more adrenaline. They have more of these aggressive. Um, that's how men are built. They're hunters. They're built that way to have these different kinds of hormones and when adrenaline is going and the and all these hormones kick in, the testosterone, they're going to be more aggressive. Mm. And women tend to be more passive. Um, women instinctively, when they see a fight, try to stop it. They instinctively try to do that, a lot of women. And men are the ones that are going for the fight. So that's a big problem when you, and I think that's what happened with Kim Potter, even though she was the one who shot. Men and women just have different reactions to these suspects, and they're not always on the same page. So she was trying to prevent him from taking things too far. And maybe in her mind, she was helping him, like, be careful here, yeah. you know, um, because that's a woman's instinct to de-escalate. And a man, when they get in these heads, they're just going on gut instincts here. They're not thinking <laughs> as rationally. Well, you know, these, they're just like— and which is what you want a cop to be able to do in a lot. Of, it could save their life. In the George Floyd incident, up. okay, there were three cops. Two of them were young rookies with the Derek Chauvin, who was a veteran a cop like this guy. Yeah. And because he was like a veteran and their boss, the superior officer and everything, right. they were a little timid. They were rookies. Yeah. And, you know, what, what's happened, this incident, I, I don't totally agree with that. I, I, I watched the video a couple of times. And I think the sergeant was so sharp, um, uh, caught off guard that someone grabbed him from behind and grabbed his gun belt while he was 
dealing with the suspect. That probably has never happened I, to him. I can't imagine it's happened yeah, to any officer. It's a weird thing for her to do. And um, I think his reaction was complete, complete in, uh, reflex. And he did back off, although he was pissed. Well, and, in today's and world, her, it's, you know, unacceptable. What happened? Yeah, what happened to her, she's been a cop for just a couple of years. She's in her mid-20s. She's the woke, woke era. Yeah, exactly. And not only is she woke, but all, all of this that's coming down on police officers, you know, those rookie cops in the George Floyd case, you know, one of the things about sexual— You have generational issues as well yeah. as gender well, issues. Well, one of the things sure. about sexual harassment, they say, well, you know, these older men, even if a girl— who's an adult who works, you know, like a Lewinsky Clinton thing. She's still a victim because he's older in a position of authority and she can't say no. That didn't work with those young rookie cops in the George Floyd, Derek Chauvin case. They're going to prison too. So this officer, this is, this is what all of this has done to police work. Police, anytime they're involved in an incident with a suspect, mm-hmm. they're worried about going to jail themselves, which is These something days police, for sure. yeah, which is something police officers should not be worrying about. And th- if he would have had his gun out on a handcuffed suspect, he could have shot her. Um, yeah, well, then I could see her doing. Hey, wait a minute, you know. But he he did not. He had the pepper spray out, which we don't even know that he was going to use. And his well, gun you know, was holstered. So what she did, the the lady officer, no, what she, she was did, wrong. it was dangerous. What she very did. dangerous because you know a cop, everything they use is on their belt. Including his gun. They have their gun, their taser, their pepper spray. And I'm sure they're trained that if somebody grabs that from that is a hostile move. If somebody grabs that, that's where all their weapons are. And I don't know what the hell she was thinking. So she was definitely wrong, definitely wrong. And she should be reprimanded for that, too, because she put him in danger by doing that. She distracted him. She she that when he turned around because he didn't know at first you're right he didn't know who did that it could have been somebody came up from behind him and when he, when he, she did that he had to turn around and this other guy could have done something could have could have I don't know you know she put him in a bad spot for sure but he did turn around and he paused and he saw exactly who it was and then he lunged so he did know who it was yeah they both screwed up as far as I'm concerned and they both oh, should be yeah. reprimanded it's a bad situation it's very dangerous. like I said things happen the problem is, or problem or good thing is, everything's recorded now, so it it might might get taken out of context or exaggerated or out of proportion because mm-hmm. there's other things that lead up to these things, and yeah. there's things that happen after these things. Yeah. And when you're in a situation like this, when you're a cop, you don't have time to think. You react. That's it. You don't think. You react. And all they're thinking is, I got to subdue this su- suspect and make sure I don't I that I get to go home tonight. And that is their main thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They're reacting to everything. So when she grabbed his belt, which was a stupid thing to do, he's going to react to that, you know, Mm -hmm. but so they both did something stupid. Well, let us know what you think in the comments. And I, I think a lot of this has to do with, um, a couple things here. We're talking about generational, this officer is like 20 generational issues. So she, you know, you, you got a young officer who's all woke, you know? Yeah. That that's part of it. It's a problem. And also the fear that police officers have because of, I mean, look at this, this is all over worldwide media. So let us know in the comments what you think about that. We're going to take a quick break. When we get back, there's a lot more to talk about. We've just scratched the surface. We'll be back right after this. Do not go anywhere. Hi, Brian Craig here. I'm in studio with my wife, Kathy, and she's here to tell you about her experience with the My Pillow mattress topper. Well, as you know, Brian, I was waking up in pain almost every morning for years and years, and we had bought a new mattress not that long ago, but it still was not doing the trick. So I said to you, let's get the My Pillow mattress topper and let's see if it helps or makes any kind of a difference. And I have to tell you, after sleeping on it just one night, I woke up no pain. I felt incredible. It made a huge, huge difference for me. And the pain has not returned. Wow, that's absolutely amazing. Now go to MyPillow.com and order your MyPillow mattress topper and do what Kathy and I did. Use the promo code Kane at checkout. K-A-N-E. And this is an incredible deal because with the promo code Kane, you will save 30% off the MyPillow mattress topper and get two free My Pillows. But you've got to use the promo code Kane at checkout. Checkout, K-A-N-E. It comes in every size, too, from twin all the way up to California king. That's promo code Kane, K-A-N-E, at MyPillow.com. 
Do you love to cook and create your own dishes for others to enjoy? Then you need to visit Zenin.com. That's Z-H-N-E-N. At Zenin.com, find chefs, cooks, and culinarians looking to make extra cash by cooking a home-cooked meal for others. This is a personal chef for hire. Dine-in service, whether it's for a dinner party or a nice romantic dinner for two. Many people would love to hire a professional chef or cook for themselves. The process is simple. Just go to Zenin.com. The cook or chef go to the Zenin app, creates a profile to showcase what they have to offer, as well as a price range. The requesters then browse local cooks or chefs in their area to book their services. There's a growing demand, and the Zenin app can make it happen. If you love to cook and are good at it, you can make some great money doing what you love. The best part of networking through Zenin is that anyone can create a profile and show off their skills. If you're looking to hire your own personal chef, visit Zenin.com. That's Z-E-H-N-E-N. Also, download the app in the Google Play and Apple App Store. Zenin, the new way to dine in. Do you have a new puppy you want to train? It's easy if you have the right help. And that is what you will find in the book from author Shelley Richardson. Dog Training Made Simple. A beginner's guide to dog training. A step-by-step how-to guide on puppy training. Available on Amazon. It includes everything you need to know to raise the perfect dog. This beginner guide is a must-read for all dog owners. You will learn the do's and don'ts when training your puppy. It's filled with straightforward techniques based on the latest canine behavior research with safe methods that always provide the one results. You will learn how to deal with stubborn breeds and correctly identify your dog's personality traits. Learn how to prepare your home and properly welcome your new puppy. It includes guidance for essential activities such as potty training, walking, learning basic commands, and that's just the beginning. Easily conquer behavior challenges and create the perfect companion with Dog Training Made Simple. A beginner's guide to dog training. A step-by-step how-to guide on puppy training from author Shelley Richardson. Available on Amazon. Amazon and Kindle, paperback, and audiobook. It makes a great gift, too. Order your copy right now. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida, Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. Thanks so much, everyone, for tuning in. So Mitt Romney, piece of work this guy is. What would Trump say? This one's a beaut. uh, This is what Mitt Romney said today. One bad week for President Joe Biden. Mitt Romney says it's 52 bad weeks. So he said Biden's had 52 bad weeks. So the question is really a simple one. Why, why'd you vote for him, exactly. uh, Mitt Romney? Because everyone knows Mitt Romney, like George Bush, and um, probably even Mike Pence voted for Joe Biden. Thanks, thanks a lot, uh, Romney. Uh, you know, what, what did you, why doesn't he have a national press conference like he did when he trashed Trump? Remember that? Have a press conference in the middle of the day and, and uh, tell us what he thinks about Biden. He's a real disappointment. He's been a real disappointment. He sure is. Yeah. Because I he, voted he for sure him. He sure is. And, uh, and I talked to my best friend who lives in Utah. And, uh, you know, he's a, he's a Mormon. He's a Utah guy. Well, he's really not. But he's, you know, a carpetbagger. But he's a Mormon. And she said that they're very, um, they're very unhappy with him for sure. You know, a lot of people, you know, Romney was governor a long time ago. And a lot of people just assume he was the governor of Utah. Yeah, you, I did. You got to remember, Mitt Romney was the governor of Massachusetts. OK, right. yeah. so Matt, that is, you know, liberal land. So yeah. there you go. And remember, Obamacare was modeled off to, after something called Romney Care, right. which was a health care program that Governor Romney brought to the uh, state. You know, I, I was reading some of my comments on YouTube this morning. I thought I'd read a couple to you and we can talk about them because I. Um, I, I, you know. I talk a lot about fake MAGA and it's something we got to be careful about oh yeah it's and, definitely gearing, gearing up again yeah let me let me read this one to you somebody wrote this on my youtube comments today there and this was in response to the historic trump rally in arizona over the weekend i voted twice for trump but i won't do it again i would vote to, for desantis though in 2024 mm-hmm. why they don't tell us why so i, I mean why would someone who voted for trump twice all of a sudden, not vote for him again. 
you know, th- this is something you got to understand, mm-hmm. okay, with Democrats that, you know, I've been dealing with this in talk radio forever, the seminar callers we talk about. And seminar callers come on around election time, which we're in an election year now. And it, it doesn't matter who the Republican is. It could be Bush. It could be Reagan. It could be uh, Trump. You know, it could be even McCain when McCain was running, believe it or not. And what happens when you're in election years is you hear from all of these people that are lifelong Republicans. They vote. I voted for Bush. I voted for Reagan. You know, I, I but I'm not I can't do it this time. I got to yeah. go to the other side. Highly that, suspicious. And, and this person here, they say they'd vote for DeSantis. Now, of course, you know, we love DeSantis. He's our governor. He's mm-hmm. the greatest. He said he's not running. He will not run against Trump. No, he won't. He said that very clearly. No, don't believe won't. anything you hear he about that. He won't do that because I, I don't think he I don't think he could beat him. Well, they had this fake. Give him a run for his money, but I don't think he could beat him. Yeah, well, they had this fake story today that Trump has been bad mouthing. Oh, yeah, that's DeSantis all over the place and now. said yeah. that he's boring, no charisma. Right. Let me tell you. I have seen in person, in person, up close with my own two eyes, President Trump with Ron DeSantis. These two guys love each other. They are best friends. They are besties. They are tight. And you can tell, you know, and and um, Trump made DeSantis the governor of Florida. DeSantis was losing in the primaries until mm-hmm. Trump came in and That's endorsed true. him. DeSantis is famous now. But when he was first running for governor, I knew who he was because I'd seen him in a couple congressional hearings. We did not know much about him in Florida outside of his congressional district. Right. He was not well known. We knew who he was, but we knew nothing about him. And and then Trump came and had a rally and endorsed him, and we started hearing about yeah. him. And now we've experienced this, his greatness as governor. But um, of th- there's a lot of people running around on on social media and, and calling shows Say, I voted for Trump twice. I can't do it again. Here's another common thing they say. We've got to move beyond Trump. Right. That's another thing they say. Why? Well, this is this is how they're, you know, they're working to divide MAGA. And when you see those comments, you know, look at the crowd that was in Arizona Saturday. Yeah. Do you think his popularity is waning at all? Of if anything, not. it's getting stronger. So anybody... This is psychops. So anybody who puts in a comment or calls your show and says something because they feel they have to say they were a Trump person to have credibility. Yes. Well, I was a Trump person, but those people are like, look at Greg, too. Your one caller that I can't stand. He's been telling you for years he loves Trump. He's finally now, now that you've been calling him out on it, he finally doesn't say that anymore because he never liked Trump and everybody knows it. And even he knows it's not credible. These people call in and they say they're Trump supporters or they write that because they feel it gives they have to they have to pretend they're MAGA yeah. to have credibility. That's Think right. Think about that. And then they try to convince you. Um, you do what you feel is right, you know, mm-hmm. and, and it'll be nice to have the country back in, in some in competent hands. Yeah. For once. And and these people that are obsessed with Trump and hate him for stupid reasons. They're the reason we're dealing with this crap right now. No doubt. about I mean, that. all that Russia stuff and all these lies. I mean, this is why CNN's ratings are in the toilet, because they lie to the American people on a daily basis. And everything they say turns out to be untrue. Liberals are always lying. Look at Al Gore. I was thinking about it the other day. They're having record snow in all over the country. Record low temperatures. Not here, though. It's perfect in Florida. But record temperatures. I remember when An Inconvenient Truth came out, what, 20 years ago? You guys, if you can rent that movie, rent it. By now, we really should try to watch that again, Brian, because by now, where we live should be under four feet of water, Mm -hmm. according to Al Gore. We should have dolphins swimming in our front yard. He that that movie is so full of of predictions that never came true. And I remember when I saw that, I said to you, God, I'm a little worried. And you said, this is all BS. And you were right. It's everything they say is a lie. They are stupid. They like to scare people and create division. They will never change. This is how they operate. That, yep. that, that That's the kind of people that are drawn to this party. Liars, crooks, and thieves. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's true. And 
You know, when when someone said, you know, there, there's a big effort now to try to divide Trump and DeSantis. They're obsessed with it. Yeah, they are. And that's why you're hearing a lot of these uh, fake things. And it, you're going to hear more of it. Yeah, exactly. Now, there's a story today you're not going to hear anything about unless you're here or go to some conservative websites. This, this is shocking. Listen to this. Nancy Pelosi's son. Now, this is, you know, remember, you know, Nancy Pelosi's family, they're like the Biden family. Yeah. Their family's got all these business deals doing going on because they can make money. She just can't directly. So exactly. her husband can, her son can't. And listen, her son looks just like her. Oh, God help him. He, yeah, he's he look the that male old? version. Mm. Nancy, listen to this. Nancy Pelosi's son was involved in five companies yep. probed by federal agencies, but has never been charged himself. A shocking paper trail shows Paul Pelosi Jr.'s connection to a host of fraudsters, rule breakers mm. and convicted criminals his years long repeated business dealings raised two troubling questions nancy pelosi's son has been unable to answer this why did he get mixed up with such unsavory characters mm. over and over i think i know why yeah because they're criminals they're they're <laughs> they, 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 they're criminals answer. yep and how involved was he with the criminal investigations into his fraudster colleagues the list of companies um includes the following the 52-year-old, her son's 52, oh. joined the board of a biofuel company after it defrauded investors, according to a Security Exchange Committee ruling, mm. and whose CEO was convicted after bribing officials in Georgia. Nancy Pelosi's son was president of an environmental investment firm that turned out to be a front for two convicted fraudsters. Then Nancy Pelosi's son joined a lithium mining a lot of green companies here exactly. with this, isn't it? These green well, these, companies. These companies, yeah. this is why liberals, I keep telling you, climate change, this is a cover mm -hmm. to commit fraud. Obviously. They use this as an excuse, and then they give deals to these companies, yeah. and they create these companies. You know, the, these, co these committees are big on probes. They're not big on convictions. They like to probe and look and pretend they're doing something, and they never do anything about it. It's they have a license to steal these Democrats yeah. and they, they they create a fake crisis like climate change and they commit so much fraud under that umbrella. It's incredible. But nobody's ever going to do anything about it. I hope I hope when Trump gets in, he really. Well, we're telling everyone more care. So Nancy Pelosi's son, he joined another green company, a lithium mining company. Remember, lithium is what is needed for the batteries and the That's electric right. cars. Nancy Pelosi's son joined a lithium mining company and received millions of shares wow. issued as part of a massive $164 million fraud. Then Nancy Pelosi's son was vice president of a company previously in the, uh, investigated for scam calls that targeted senior citizens. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Could you imagine if Don Jr. was connected to one of these companies? Could you imagine? Incredible. Uh, Nancy Pelosi's son has close business ties with a man accused by the Department of Justice of running a fake United Nations charity that stole the money of investors. And then finally, Nancy Pelosi's son worked for a medical company that tested drugs on people without FDA authorization. Oh. This is, a, is according to an FDA investigation. Wow. Was Dr. Fauci in that group, too? I don't know. It, it's, uh, and it says here, uh, Pelosi's family uh, made... Multi millions while she has been Speaker of the House. You know, um, they become politicians so they can protect their families yeah. and also for access. Well, they get, they, but how do you no, think she's he, untouchable? He's like Hunter Biden. Yeah, well, exactly. He, he's not a businessman, he's no. a front man for her. He's exactly. doing, he's, he's making this money for Nancy like Hunter's making money for Joe. And they, they, I'll tell you, they go into, po they're like mob bosses. They yeah. go into politics to commit fraud and to, be, to and for, to be <laughs> corrupt. Because they know if they normally did this kind of stuff and they weren't connected and they weren't politicians, they probably end up in jail. Well, but because they're the Speaker of the House, they get away with this nonsense. Well, if you look at these companies, my guess would be all of these companies made money yep. through things that passed through Congress of that course. was being run by her. That's what they do. And that's why Nancy, anytime she's around Trump, she gets all shaky. <laughs> the president, elections have consequences. Yeah. Because it goes because, into their pocket. Because she, he's costing her money. Because, exactly right. Because President Trump doesn't sign bills into law that help her scam 
family scam companies. Like Build Back Better. Exactly. That's what Build Back Better is all That's about. Right. That's so they want to pass this stuff, these bills yeah. that are thousands and thousands and thousands of pages that nobody ever reads. Oh, by the way. Because they're full of payments and kickbacks. I missed, I missed one. The Gateway Pundit. Uh, has reported in the past about Nancy Pelosi's son being involved in a corrupt business in the Ukraine. Oh boy! So you know this is this is insane. At and least none he's this, not into hookers and crack. Yeah, none of this is in the news. Crazy. We're gonna we're gonna take our last break. When we get back, there's even more to talk about. Don't go anywhere. We will be back after this. Have you ever dreamed of being wealthy using real estate? If you answered yes, there's a podcast you will want to add to your playlist. Big Fat Real Estate Checks, hosted by Marco Kozlowski. Available on all podcast platforms. It's a podcast about investing in U.S.-based multifamily real estate. If you want to replace your J-O-B income with passive income for life, host Marco Kozlowski's proprietary systems and processes can help you get there. And you don't necessarily need money or credit to do it. Marco has been in real estate for over 20 years and has learned lessons, horror stories, and an entertaining and fun way of teaching you how to win the game of cash flowing real estate without breaking the bank, without risk, and without using any of your credit. He has hundreds of successful students who used his systems and processes to replace their income and retire. Check it out today and learn from Marco. His podcast is filled with valuable information that you can actually use. You will learn how to build real, generational wealth. No get-rich schemes here at Big Fat at Real Estate Checks with host Marco Kozlowski to your playlist right now. Available wherever you listen to podcasts. From author Frankie Bell comes your next must-read book, Choose to Win. Available on Amazon, Dr. Frankie Bell began her life in Auburn, Alabama, in a tiny house with no indoor bathroom. Growing up poor meant going without things most of us take for granted, such as new clothes, washing machines, and a car in the driveway. It also meant frequent moves between relatives' homes. From a young age, Frankie learned self-reliance, a lesson that would serve her later in life. One day in 2010, she found herself facing down her own mortality. After a horrible pedestrian accident, badly broken, and grieving the death of her close friend, she was told she would be lucky to walk again. Certainly, her days as an avid runner were over. Thus, her long and painful recovery became her greatest challenge. Frankie had to come to realize just how strong and determined she could be. Moreover, she had developed a relationship with God, built on the understanding that his plan will be fulfilled, no matter how hard one resists. Choose to Win is Dr. Frankie Bell's remarkable story of courage, faith, and optimism and the life lessons she's learned along the way. Order your copy right now on Amazon. Choose to win from author Frankie Bell. From author T.W. Schultz comes the book, The Proficient Investor, available on Amazon. Have you ever wondered how you can get the lifestyle you've always wanted? Have you tried to invest here and there, inspired by sporadic advice, without getting an actual return? When you invest, you're taking a risk. The risk is bigger when you're a beginner. As a beginner, or even if you've been trading for a while, you need easy-to-learn, easy-to-apply methods that will get you into the market at the right moment to make a profit quickly. In the book, The Proficient Investor, from author T.W. Schultz, you will find exactly what you need in order to become proficient in no time. Don't lose any more time exploring difficult options, sharpen the exact skills you need to maximize your profit, and start living the lifestyle that you desire. Whether you're looking for a first-time guide to investment or to refresh your basics, The Proficient Investor is the exact read you've been searching for. You will learn to build strong foundations that will become your trading arsenal to avoid unnecessary losses and seize opportunity at the right moment. Order your copy right now. The Proficient Investor from author T.W. Schultz, available on Amazon in Kindle, paperback, and audiobook. If you love unique silver jewelry, you need to check out Silver City 925 on Etsy. There you will find a collection of vintage sterling silver jewelry and Native American rings for men, women, and children of all ages that are a tribute to cultures from around the world. From traditional Navajo and Zuni rings to Art Deco rings, poison rings, and animal rings, Silver City 925 on Etsy brings to you a variety of styles. They're beautifully designed vintage settings with gorgeous gemstones, including turquoise and 
amber, lapis moonstones, onyx, coral, tiger eye, and a lot more. Rings are like many sculptures that can be worn on your fingers to express who you are. Whether you are searching for yourself or a gift for a special friend or relative, you will always find something extra special at Silver City 925 on Etsy. Go to the shop right now and start shopping. Etsy.com slash shop slash Silver City 925. Share the link on all of your social media so your friends can shop at Silver City 9252. Etsy.com slash shop slash Silver City 925. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida, Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. All right, there's a couple things I want to talk about here at the end of the program today. And by the way, if you're new to the program, make sure that you follow and subscribe on whatever platform you are listening to us on. And if you're listening to us on YouTube, make sure you like the video, give it a thumbs up. That helps spread the word about this program. Okay, a couple things. So President Trump had this very historic rally uh, Saturday night in Arizona. It was a huge rally. It was good. And also Carrie Lake was there who's running for governor out there, and she is the local Fox she is fantastic. Um, news anchor who quit over her disgust of the fake news media. She had a great speech, and we she's, had— She's fantastic. Yeah, we watched uh, the Trump rally flipping back and forth between Newsmax TV and Right Side Broadcasting. They both covered it in different ways, and um, it was it was the coverage was different, but very good because you saw different things going on. It was it was very good coverage. Fox News did not carry it, but mm-hmm. not only did they not carry the rally, well, they carried it on their Fox Nation app, okay, but they didn't carry it on Fox Television. Right. Yeah, yeah. They ran a. Um, I got some. I didn't watch Fox. I thought it was a rerun. I was incorrect. I got a message from someone. They they ran a highlight clip show of Jesse Waters' show because it is the last episode ever of the Saturday Night Waters World because mm-hmm. he's got that seven p.m. slot. Right. You know, when does that Fox. start? I, I, I don't or know if it starts maybe, today or next week. Maybe today. So yeah, you we'll may check it out. We'll find out. But Fox not. But Fox did a couple things here that shows what Paul Ryan, Mitt Romney, Mitch McConnell like snakes they are. Not only did they not wa- uh, run the Trump rally on Saturday night, Fox News Channel. We had Fox News on for a couple of hours today after I got off the air. And I didn't see them even mention the rally, mm-hmm. mention President Trump. They had panel after panel discussing everything under the sun. They didn't mention Trump. They didn't mention Kerry Lake. It's like a blackout on Trump over there at, at Fox News Channel. And that is not by accident. You know, he changed his ending song. Yeah, and Newsmax talked about it all day today. Yeah, and the song itself that he changed it to, its what, what's the name of the song? Hold On, I'm Coming. Hold On, I'm Coming. It, By and, Sam and David. Yeah, and, and he changed his closing song to that because he's saying, that's, that song means I'm running for president in 2024. Times are tough in America. Right. Hold on, It's going to be bad, there. but hang in there. Hang in there. I'm, I'm, I'm running. I'm going to be back in the White House in 2024. Yeah. That the changing of the song to that particular song is news is news. Okay, on top of everything else involved with the rally that we were talking about. So um, I know there's some people on Fox that we all like. We all like Tucker, you know, Hannity, Laura Ingram here and there. But but Fox News is not with us, and them not carrying the rally, and then not even but they're mentioning not it on Monday. Those calls Tucker and them, they're no. not making those calls. These are the these are the the board. This is the yes, behind the, the scenes executives people, that are on the, the executives yes. that are making that call. So don't blame the, the hosts because they have no say in the lineup. But what I've told people is if they have Newsmax to watch it on Newsmax to send a clear mm-hmm. – you can watch it on Right Side Broadcasting too on your phone, so they get credit for that. But I would put it on your TV. They have a really good picture, and they have good coverage on Newsmax. They have people there. John Bachman was there. They interviewed people. They interviewed Mike Lindell. President Trump, too. What we did is we watched Right Side Broadcasting during the day because they show the entire rally, which is awesome. They started at 1 o'clock yeah, on Yeah, they right show side. all the speakers. Newsmax does not do that. They don't put it on until Trump's on. 
So we watched on right side until Trump came on. And then when Trump came on, we switched to Newsmax because I want Fox to know that that time slot is precious and they're making a huge mistake. And I'd like to see 10 million, 15 million watching at that time. Yeah. And believe me, they will notice that. Mm-hmm. And they might say, they might think twice, like, well, man, yeah. maybe we should play and, this here. And, uh, you know, I, I love right side broadcasting. They do very good work. They do. I have friends there. Trump called them out Saturday. You mentioned right side. Yeah. I have friends with right side broadcasting they do and, a good job. and, uh, I've, I've talked to a lot of people off air, off camera from right side broadcasting, and they're all very nice people. They and are. I'll tell you something. All of the people you see on the air at Right Side Broadcasting, I've talked to most of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have not yet. I I keep missing Liz Willis. And the main guy. Yeah. Uh, No, I actually, Brian, Brian? I meant Brian. But every time I go to something. Yeah, she's not there. Either Liz Willis is not there or she's at another location. Be cool to meet her. Be cool to meet her. Yeah, like like, uh, um, I I, uh, I met up with Mike Nificent at the Trump boat parade, right. and I'm like, oh, great, Liz Will-, and Liz Willis was out on one of the boats. They're all, you know, everybody there. One thing I've noticed about everyone from Right Side Broadcasting, yeah. no ego when you meet these people. Yeah, and I know some nice. of you probably have met some of them. No ego. And let me tell you, what they do is not easy because sometimes it's very inclement, and it could be super, super hot. And Liz Willis is always dressed up with tons of makeup on. She's TV ready. And the guys will wear suits and things. It could be super hot or super cold. And they are out there all day long <laughs> talking to people. It's not easy to do that. And they talk nonstop. That, they have, there's no dead air unless they have a speaker and then you're listening to the speaker. But that is very tiring mm-hmm. work to be out in the elements, hot or super cold, and talking to people, I mean, they must be exhausted the next day and need a couple of days to mm-hmm. recover because they cover everything. They interview people. I mean, they're there for eight to ten well, hours. And, it's really amazing. And what Right Side Broadcasting did at this rally is something I have never seen them do at another rally. They had people with other cameras in the stands right. that were probably on iPhones or something. Yeah, that was pretty and cool. they had they had one person with a camera that was in the in the seats behind President Trump, like those bleacher seats behind the stage, way up at the top. And they gave a view from up at the top that you never get to see on television. And that's when you get to see the crowd goes as far as the eye can see and then fades in the sea of blackness. I mean, it went beyond even where you could see because it was at night. And they did incredible stuff. But Newsmax is the number four highest rated cable news network. Yeah. That means that they have ratings higher than Fox Business. So Yeah, we got to move them up that yeah, and for sure. Th- so it, number one is Fox. And Fox News has made a lot of changes to try to do some damage have, control t- from the rise of but Newsmax. But they got to run the rallies on their regular mm-hmm. network, well, not on the app only. So number one is Fox. Number two is CNN. Three is MSNBC. And four is... Uh, Newsmax, and let me tell you something. If if our support of Newsmax and you guys supporting Newsmax uh-huh. could bump them up to beat MSNBC, and they became number three, that'd be amazing. That would freak out CNN and Fox News. All you have they to would do, be freaked out. That's right. Watch all the rallies on Newsmax. Watch Greg Kelly every night, or record these shows. Eric Bowling, Stitchfield. I know Stitchfield's up against Tucker. You can record Stitchfield. And then the guy after him, Rob Schneider, he's really good. You can record these shows and watch them another the next day or whatever, and they still get credit for right if you record even on your DVR. Well, is it the same as I watching don't, live? That's a good question. Yeah. That's a good question. I think it's worth I, it if you can. I, I don't know. You guys, live is best. Lock them, in, put them on your TV, and right. lock them in. You know. It, in the old days, they used to have Nielsen families with the Nielsen boxes. I remember that. Now everyone's a Nielsen family. Your that's cable right. box does the ratings. Yeah, okay? that's true. And and if we could unseat MSNBC, which – That would be amazing. Newsmax can't be far behind. They're very lowly rated. I think it's going to happen once Trump announces he's running and he starts doing rallies. I'm going to make a prediction here. And as you guys know, my predictions sometimes come true. Like I predicted Hillary Clinton was going to run in 2024. Now that's all they're talking about on the news the last few days. But I said it first months ago. I'm making another prediction. I think once Trump announces that he's going to run and he starts doing weekly rallies, I think Fox is going to start carrying these rallies because because they are not going to be able to turn away from those numbers. You know what? And they're going to be really if it's every week 
that Newsmax is pulling in 10 million viewers oh on a goodness. Saturday night. You think they're just going to sit back and let that happen? Their advertisers are going to demand it. And they're going to say, you need to run those rallies and I'll sponsor it because yeah. I'm missing out on business here. And you know here. what? When we want- Trust me. And, okay. Now, and this is important. I'm okay? telling you, it's going to happen. This is important because we really want to make Newsmax number three. It'll freak everybody out. Okay. Oh, yeah. here, here's the thing. Okay. When, when the rallies are on and Right Side Broadcasting is carrying them, have Newsmax not on YouTube. On your television. Right. And then right side on your phone. On or your, your phone on your or your iPad. computer or something. Yeah. And you could just turn the volume down on one or the other. Exactly. You can have both. We have multiple exactly. tablets and devices. Sometimes Brian and I will have a rally on like three different places. We, yes. You know, we'll have it on the TV, then his phone, then my phone. I like right side because they have a chat and I like to support their channel because they had the other day. Before Trump even came on, they had 52,000 people yes, watching. I have Trump. never seen a number yeah. that high. And I think they had said when he came on, it went up to 100. Mm -hmm. That is unheard 112, of. I, I think, mean, I remember in the like beginning, mm -hmm. they'd have a couple thousand mm -hmm. watching. Because they have really grown. So, and they cover a lot of stuff that the networks want. And it's important to watch. You know, Newsmax has an app, and they're on YouTube live. It's important to watch Newsmax on your TV yes. if you have it so they get the credit for the rating. Okay, on television to yeah. go up against the other cable networks. Yeah, still important. watch, still watch right side broadcasting, like Kathy said, on your phone, on your tablet, on your iPad, on your computer, but have Newsmax on the television. And this is very, very important. All right, now listen, we're all out of time. We will talk next time, I promise you. My name's Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We'll talk to you next time.